So you're about to buy the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, or the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and you're thinking, hmm, should I really do this? Well, listen, I got some things I want to tell you about before you click that buy button. There might be some things you might be interested in. Don't just fall for all the marketing. There's some good and some bad. I'll tell you what it is right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listen to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below, but for now, let's just get into the video. So yes, it's about that time. You're so happy, you're so excited. You're gonna order your new iPhone, your iPhone 11, iPhone 11 Pro, or iPhone 11 Pro Max, super whamadyne version, uh, and you're super excited, and you're about ready to click that buy button. But listen, here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you to slow down, because here's the thing. There was a couple of things that slipped under the radar that I didn't even really realize after I watched uh, the entire presentation for the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, some are good, some are bad, and some are just weird. Apple has made some decisions this year that some of them, I, I, I'm just, I don't get it. I don't get it. Let's start with the iPhone 11 since I think that's what most of you are going to buy. Now, it's a pretty darn good value at $700. Finally, they got that under $750 uh, price point that I was talking about late last year. Um, which is great, I guess, but there's a couple of things that kind of annoy me, and I mentioned one of them in my last video. And that is this thing comes with 64 gigs of storage, which is terrible. There's a couple of things that really bother me about shipping with 64 gigs of storage. Some of you might be like, well, I don't even use barely 32 gigs. And I guess that's okay, but the reality is this. Most sh flagship phones are shipping with at least 128 gigs, and in most points now, 256. Again, they've never led the industry in offering storage at the base level, but here's the thing. They do offer other sizes, it's just they wanna charge you for it. But of the phones we talk about today, this might actually be the one that makes the most sense money-wise. There is a 128 gig version of the iPhone 11, and it's only $50 more. I'm just gonna tell you right now, pay the extra $50. It's worth it. 128 gigs will give you a lot of storage and it will be something you won't have to worry about as much when you're making videos and especially the 4K videos you can do on that thing. And all the things you'll be doing with this phone, if you hold on to it for a couple of years, you're gonna be very happy that you got that. And it's $50. While for a lot of people that could be a substantial amount of money, in the long term, over the course of a couple of years, it's only a couple dollars a month. Let me just say, of all of these, this is the one upgrade you absolutely must do if you're getting the iPhone 11. One thing I didn't catch during the presentation, I think I just listened to it wrong and I'm sure, I'm sure I wasn't the only one. The iPhone 11 doesn't come with the fast charger in the box. If you watch the presentation, you heard them talking about the fast charger is in the box, but that actually does not apply to the iPhone 11. So they want you to go spend $50 to get the uh, fast charger again. I have a solution for you. A company called Ugreen reached out to me and sent me over their fast charging solution for iPhone 10R, 10S, 10S Max, and of course the 11. This thing works. I actually tried it. I went from like 30% on my iPhone 10R to like 80% in about 30-ish minutes using this setup. I'm gonna have a link in the description below with some coupon codes. You will finally be able to get fast wireless charging for any of your iPhones that support it for less than $20 all told. That's pretty amazing. So yes, you should absolutely thank me in the comments below, even if you have an older iPhone that has fast charging but you've never been able to fast charge it. I have links in the description, click that link. I'll get a little kickbacks and affiliate link. Uh, you know, let me just be above board, but I'm not getting much. You on the other hand are getting some really good products for a really good price. So shout out to you Green for that. We appreciate you for helping out the players. But yeah, you're probably gonna wanna go ahead and get that because even though the battery life on this thing is great, if you're out and about, maybe you go on a vacation or something and you need to charge up super fast, that charger's super amazing. Let me tell you, getting that much charge in 30 minutes it just changes the entire usage of that phone, especially if you're away from home and you're not in the normal kind of charging situations. If you fly a lot or something like that, you need to get this charger. Next, and this is gonna go for all of the phones, you're gonna need a case. Now, it's probably more important for the Pro, but I feel like if you're getting the 11 and you're spending any kind of money, you need to protect your investment. You can get a really nice iPhone case from Apple, but you're gonna spend way too much. So again, check out the description below. I just picked out a couple of different cases that I think are cool. Um, there are affiliate links again. If you buy one, I get a little kickback. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but check them out. There's a ton of options on Amazon, and I think it's just 
worth protecting your investment. Don't just go caseless. I mean, some of you savages will. And let me tell you something, you, hats off to you, you crazy. I, I couldn't do that. So if you go ahead and buy the 128 gig version, along with the fast charging and a case, I mean, you're gonna be almost about $800 all in, somewhere around in there. Um, especially after tax and everything. So it's not quite as cheap as you thought when you see it's like $700 once you're out of the gate, plus the tax on that thing if you have tax in your area. I mean, you're over 800 bucks pretty quick. But the value for your money is pretty decent. Plus, if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you already know. You already know. As we talked about before, the main difference between the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro is basically the screen size, the screen type, LCD versus OLED, and the third camera. Maybe one other thing, the battery and the waterproofness, but if you're throwing your phone in the, in the water, you, you know, listen, you, you're on your own. If you're going straight up for the iPhone Pro, then that's great. You already know what you need. You need a case, just like we talked about. You are gonna get the fast charger inside the, uh, the case, and you're gonna get your year's worth of Apple Plus TV thing, like, uh, like all the other iPhones as well. You're pretty well set. Um, the one thing I would say, again, get another case, get a case, get something that's gonna protect it. It's a very expensive thing. And after the taxes and everything, it's a lot of money. Now, if you're trading in, you actually can get a pretty good deal on it. Go to Apple's site and you can trade in if you have an old phone that's paid off um, and, and buffer yourself a little bit of money. I will say this, you probably can get more money by selling it to a friend or on Swap or on eBay, but those are a little bit more risky than sending it to Apple. So it's up to you. Do you wanna send it to Apple and not have to worry so much about maybe someone scamming you? Or do you wanna get more money and maybe take that risk? Now to the iPhone 11 Pro Max, and this actually goes for the iPhone 11 Pro to be honest, it starts at 64 gigs. So we really just, I, you know, this really annoys me. You can't call a phone pro and offer 64 gigs in 2019. But that's exactly what Apple did. Shenanigans, man, I'm calling shenanigans on this one. So you might as well just go ahead and jump up to 256 gigs. There's no 128 gig option. And this is terrible because you could get away with 128 gigs. If it only costs you about 50 bucks like it did for the iPhone 11, okay, no harm, no foul. But this is ridiculous. Most phones, including things like the OnePlus 7 Pro, offer 256 as the base storage. Apple is making it an upgrade. So to get up to a storage that actually makes that phone a Pro, 150 extra dollars. 150 extra dollars. That phone is now beyond the typical price of a flagship phone. We're talking about like $1,200. We've seen that with a note. I, I, I don't know what to say. To me, if you're buying a pro phone, minimum is 128 gigs. Apple just went ahead and shafted you. I mean, I'm just gonna say it, they shafted you. And I just don't see a reason to get the 64 gig version if you're getting the pro. If you don't need the pro features, get the 11, be done with it. Or one of the other options, which I'll talk about here in a second. But if you are getting the pro, you know you need to go ahead and get more storage. I hope you got a lot of money. So as Apple sometimes does, they've actually lowered the prices of some of the older phones, including the 10R, which now becomes one of the best values in Apple's lineup, and the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. If you're a fan of the button in any sort of way, the iPhone 8 is pretty much it. That's the last one that they are gonna sell new that's gonna have the button. That's it. You don't, I mean, nothing else. That's it, just 8 or 8 Plus, that's it. But lucky for you, that's a really good phone with actually a higher resolution screen than even the 10R. Although I don't know that you can really tell the difference between the two if you're really, you know, if I'm really honest about it. I will say this, it's a great phone, a great processor. It's gonna last for quite a long time, but I just really like the 10R. The battery life is amazing. I've really enjoyed using the phone and you actually can get it for a pretty decent price right now. Now, if we compare the iPhone 8 to the iPhone 8 Plus and the 10R, we see that there's a gradual jump up in quality and price. 449 for the iPhone 8, the 8 Plus is at 549 and 599 for the 10R. Now, of course, these are all 64 gigs of storage, which they all also have options for 128 gigs. Uh, so I would probably just go ahead and go for that. The 4.7 inch Retina HD display on the iPhone 8, 5.5 on the 8 Plus, and the 10R obviously has the 6.1. Now, there's obviously more cameras on the 8 Plus. There's two wide. Um, there's a wide and a telephoto, and there's a single wide and a single wide on the 10R and the 8, respectively. Seven megapixel for the 8 and 8 Plus, as well as the 10R. But you get to get some pretty cool things, uh, especially with Face ID on the 10R, which I absolutely love. And it can't be stated enough, the A12 chip is a powerhouse. So which one should you buy? Well, this is actually not that difficult. For people who are not like tech heads, people who just want a phone 
to just get them through the day and it's gonna last for a couple years. The iPhone 8 or 8 Plus would be that phone, especially if they're used to older iPhones. If you're on a 6S or 6 uh, iPhone right now and you wanna keep that same basic form factor, that's phone for you and it's not that expensive. If you want a little bit more power, some really cool features, no buttons, kind of a more futuristic look, more at least modern look, the 10R is it. Not a bad price, $600 if you wanna go for the extra 128 gigs, another 50 bucks, not too bad. Um, and let me tell you something, the battery life is great. I've loved the 10R, it works with iOS 13, actually so will the 8 but I just really, really enjoy the 10R and it was really the one of the best selling phones of the entire year for a very good reason. If you don't need a whole bunch of performance, but you just wanna have the latest thing, the iPhone 11 is definitely for you. It's got most of the great features of the Pro model, just a couple of things that it doesn't have. And quite frankly, most of those features are not important to you anyway. If you can get away with not having 128 uh, gigs of storage, this is the phone for you. And if you're a pro, I guess you need the Pro. Uh, but you need the 256 gig model, so you're spending all types of money. Uh, feel free to hit that join button below for my membership, because obviously you have all the money in the world. So I hope this helped you figure out exactly what you need to purchase tonight or tomorrow or the next day when you decide to go get your new iPhone. Will it be the iPhone 11? The iPhone 11 Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the iPhone 10R, the iPhone 8, the iPhone 8 Plus? Let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you're getting. I'd, be lo I'd love to talk to you about it, and I think that what you'll find is that you probably shouldn't buy the Pro. If this video helped you out in any way, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if it didn't, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I'm here every single week having a blast. Hope to see you again real soon. Peace and love, peace and love. Pre-order my phone.